Hello, I'm Vadim. I'm an IT specialist here at Nagios. Today, I'll be giving you a brief walkthrough of Nagios Log Server so you can monitor your logs and stay on top of your infrastructure. Let's take a look. After logging into Log Server, you'll see basic metrics on the home page, such as unique hosts, active alerts, and instances. To the right, you have some buttons for sources that you can start collecting logs from, such as Windows, Linux, network, or other types of devices. Below that, you'll find the number of logs that were recorded per 15 minutes, as well as total log entries that were recorded in the last two weeks. To the right of that, you could find disk usage, where you could see your used and free space. Under that, you could find global and local dashboards and queries. You could also find the total or the top five senders in the last 12 hours. If you scroll back to the top, you'll find a few tabs that you can navigate to. The Home tab is the page that we're currently on. Dashboards is where we can find a way to filter events by fields. You could customize your dashboard by picking some of the most common queries, such as 404, failed logins, or network outages. You could also configure how the graph looks by clicking the gear icon labeled Configure and selecting certain styles and queries. Once you are finished, you click Save. You could also save dashboards on the top with the red Save logo. You could rename these dashboards as well as upload them here. Going to the next tab, which is Reporting. This allows you to edit reports for your dashboards. On the top left, you could find scheduled reports. This is useful when you need a certain report at the end of each workday to review any log data or any events that have occurred. Below that, you have default reports that are given to you by Log Server. And below, you have your saved reports. You can view or delete reports by hovering over the right side of the report and clicking the right arrow or the trash can icon. Next, in the Alerting tab, you'll see settings to configure alerts for your environment. And here you could create alerts as well as see any information on that alert, such as its name, who it was created by, the last time the alert ran, the status, the alert output, and notification method. To the right of that, you could view the alert in Dashboard, Run, Deactivate, Edit, or Remove the alert. You could also look at the alert history towards the left side, which allows you to filter by the time frame. Below that are email templates, Nagios, an NRDP integration, and SNMP trap receiver. The next tab, which is Configure, shows you a configuration editor. You could edit config snapshots, add log sources, and look into global configuration settings. You could find inputs, filters, and outputs here. Moving on to the Help tab, which can help answer any questions with our administrator guide, API reference, as well as helpful resources such as our Nagios support forum, support KB, and the Nagios library. Moving on to the admin tab, you could find a basic overview of cluster statistics and version information. On the left, you'll find options such as reports, system, management, and general. In audit log, you'll find jobs and messages. You could filter on top and search for a certain message on the left. The unique hosts tab shows us the hosts that have been recording for the last 24 hours and how many logs they have sent out. Moving to cluster status, you could see some statistics of the cluster itself as well as data instances and indices. You could find your cluster ID on the top. This allows you to connect another log server using this ID code. The next tab is instance status where you'll find more information on your computer, file system, total storage, and processes. In the Index tab, 
you could find more indices and some statistics such as documents, shards, and size. Snapshots and maintenance is where you could create repositories, offload to your repositories, and configure maintenance settings and snapshots. Snapshots will show up as soon as you create a repository. In system status, you could download the system profile as well as check on any other nodes that are communicating with your Nagios log server. Moving on to the commands subsystem, you could see jobs that are running. There is information like job status, last run status, end time, the frequency of job, and the next run time, as well as some other actions that allow you to edit a job or run it. There is a button to reset all jobs right above. Under user management, you could create users and edit users. You could also add users from LDAP or AD. In the host list management, you could add and manage hosts and assign them to one or more of the host lists. Then under LDAP and AD integration, you could add servers and certificates and import users, making it easy to connect back to log server. For monitoring backend, you could open the NCPA interface with the button your NCP API token can be found here, and you could save it by clicking this button. Under that, you could find the process for instances. In custom includes, you could add many different files such as CSS, JavaScript, images, and GIFs. You could upload them by clicking Browse, selecting the file, and then clicking the Upload button. You'll see any files that have been uploaded previously below that. Moving on to global settings, you could find the default language, cluster hostname, interface URL, logged users, backup retention, update checks, reverse DNS, time zone, and CSV time zone exports. In the mail settings, you could find from email, reply to email, and send mail methods. License information shows you the type of license you have, data instances, data averages, and you could also extend your trial keys or enter and set a new license key. The last tab in the admin page is going to be proxy configurations. You could enable proxy checks by checking this box here. This will check for updates and maintenance checks as well as activation. Below that, you could find more proxy settings such as address, ports, and proxy authorization. Finally, the last page you could visit would be the username icon, which shows my profile. On this page, you could find your personal information, language settings, and you could also change your password as well as your API key. Now you know where to find all the settings in log server so you can control and customize your environment. If you've enjoyed this video, consider looking at our YouTube channel for more helpful content and I'll see you in the next one.